Aha! Now I'm here. 15 minutes late. I must apologize, everybody. I've been sitting here rambling, go for uh, rambling, but I've been sitting here talking for 15 minutes, and all of a sudden I feel this little touch on my arm, and I uh-huh. and she points, and I look, and here's the little blue bar across that says "Go Live." Well, I never touched it, <laughs> but we're live now. 15 minutes late, but hey, I haven't been late. I've been talking. <laughs> I've been sitting right here talking to this phone <laughs> for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Nobody else heard me except for Michelle, Michelle, and Roscoe. Oh. <laughs> the only ones who've heard me. Oh, God, too. I know. We were listening to you live. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know exactly where I'm at now. Start all over again. Good us. Anyway, good morning, everybody. And like I always say, again, i got to begin it every day like this because it's how I begin my day. Today is the day the Lord's made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And it does not matter. I don't care what it is. However, the enemy comes against us. Today is the day of the Lord. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Regardless, I don't care what it can be. Today is the Lord's day. No matter what. So, and there, Gloria, Gloria. Uh, Good morning, Gloria. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here for 15 minutes, but nobody she else knows. was. She knows. <laughs> oh, my daughter. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Yeah, well, just get it again. I was already even opening it up in prayer. Father, thank you, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for being thank with us. We thank you for this day that you've given us, that you've made for us. And God, you know, we do. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And thank you most of all for being so merciful and so gracious to us by sending your love to us through the form of your Son, Jesus. Your one and only begotten Son. He came to show us the way. He came to walk the walk. He talked the talk. Really, He actually truthfully did. And He showed us how to do the same. He lived it. And like I said, when you see me, you see my Father. So Father, today we ask that the same, the same thing comes into us. That when people see me, they see Jesus. As people look at me and hear me talk, they hear Jesus. Because if I, if people see me and I am as Jesus, then I am glorifying Jesus. And in the return, Jesus, of course, because everything he did and said and does is of the Father, so he glorifies you. So, Father, let us glorify you in our day today as we go throughout this day so anyway we love you father we're just so gracious for all you do and we bind up these powers of witchcraft that could come against this broadcast these mind twisting spirits these spirits of offense that come again that could come forth and so can twist these words and land in ears and cause an offense to come to someone. I am not speaking of offense. I am speaking of the truth of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that point that speaks only of and points to the direct truth of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, I'm asking you now, again, to come in and just use me as your instrument. That it's not me who speaks, and it's not any of us who speak, but it is you. And speaking through me. And Father, we're just so gracious. And we're just so gracious for all that you do. We go, so we're blessed. And there's just not enough words. There's not enough there's not enough letters in our alphabet to even to write it out. We just cannot we cannot sus- everything about you with the various words. I don't care what language we speak on this earth. 
It's just no language. And the only thing is like we join together with the angels surrounding the throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb who is and was to come. But Father, we're just so gracious and so thankful. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I don't know exactly what to title this because I didn't title it. I'll wait till later. But you know, I've mentioned these things the time before. God is not a God of confusion. When God created this earth, He established order. When God created this whole entire earth, the universe, everything, God, at first, when, I, when you know, he said, let there be life, man, there was just life of all kinds, just doing all kinds of, who knows what, crazy chaos. I mean, it, I mean, it was proven, you know, life was, the whole entire universe was in chaos. But God brought order to that chaos. And in creation, you know, it says that he gave us the sun as a light during the day. He gave us the moon as a light at night. He established the time for the sun to rise and the time to set. The moon to rise and the moon to set. God brought order to all of this chaos. And then, so anytime we have chaos and confusion in our life, it's a dead giveaway right there. It's not of God. Because God is not a or- God of order. I mean, God is not a God of of confusion and chaos. So when we have confusion and chaos, we know that is not of God. So, now then, of course, we have an enemy against us. And you know, well, as long as we're living in this, according to the gods of this world, the God of this world, and living in the way of this world, and all of that, and there's all kinds of confusion and chaos going on in our life, but we don't care because we're just too busy out here just partying and living life our way. Living as they say, live life as life Callister Carroll, they first quoted, and live life as thou wilt. You know, hey, we are, make ourselves out, God, like the serpent tent, told you, you will be like God, so therefore we turn ourselves into gods. We look for God, we don't look, I'm not, you know, just because you're not out here bowing down three times a day and saying, Hail Satan, Hail Satan, Hail Satan, you know, just because you're not doing that does not mean that you're not worshiping Satan because you are by living your life, by following for his lies, his deception that says that you are a God. And so we build ourselves up as being a God. And so we are all worshiping Satan by being <coughs> as we live in life as we will free free spirit free to do as we please but then again then we get this disorder we get all this chaos in our life confusions and we just keep right on and going trying something new jump on the next wave that comes along and just go with that wave for a while and decide that wave's not a good wave, so then we just grab our little boogie board and we get over them to catch the next wave that comes along. We try that wave for a while and that wave don't work and we decide, well, maybe we need the surfboard. So we break out the surfboard, catch the next wave that comes along. And we don't do it either. We just go from wave to wave to wave throughout our life. But then thank, praise the Lord that he sent Jesus to show us the way. He sent Jesus to show us the right path. The path that leads to heaven. The path that leads to our Father. It is a straight and narrow path. They don't have all of these different forks in the road. They don't have any of these little dangers that we step into or anything like that. It may not be a smooth, perfectly new asphalt road like what they're laying out here on the road in between here and town. It may not be all perfectly smooth. It may have some little bumps along the way. But at least it's a straight and narrow road. So God does, He don't bring these confusions. Like I said, there's no twists, there's no turns, there's no forks in the road. God brings it all into order. 
and he's done so through Jesus by giving us Jesus but then when Jesus went back to heaven Jesus said I'm not going to leave you as orphans I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to be your comforter to lead you into all truth so praise the Lord again for sending us the Spirit and we accept your Spirit Father we accept your Holy Spirit and Lord right now I ask that anyone who has not received who has not accepted the Holy Spirit anyone who has not been totally immersed in your Spirit Lord I ask right now Jesus that you touch this person that you immerse them, that you baptize them in your spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the almighty name of Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit, people. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive his immersion. Receive his baptism right now in Jesus' mighty name. See, God will give it. God will give you his. God will freely give you his spirit right now. Seek him and you shall find him. Accept him right now in Jesus' name. It's a free gift for all of those who will come to the Lord. But let's seek him, let's ask for him, let's receive him. Father, I receive it. Yeah, I receive it, Father. I receive your spirit, Father. In Jesus' name. Anyway, we have this Holy Spirit, and we. <coughs> You're frozen. Huh? You're frozen. Who? You are. Me? Mm -hmm. You're okay. Keep going. Hmm. I'm putting Ephesians up here. I'm putting Ephesians uh, 1, 3, two, okay. 3, 3, so, 1. Okay, go ahead. But we. But now then, in this order of in this in this order that we've been given by God, no more confusion, no more chaos, no God's established order. What does the enemy want to do? He wants to come in and pervert. He wants to come in and counterfeit. He wants to come in and twist. What God has done, He can't create anything, but He likes to, He can, man. He just loves to take and twist and create confusion into our own personal lives. And one of the ways he does so is through religion, through religion practices. And I'm not talking religion as in Protestantism versus Catholicism or Catholicism versus Islam or Islam versus Hinduism or Buddhism or any of these, what we know as you know, the world religions. I'm not talking religion. When I'm talking about religion, it's things that we do on a continual basis at a set time every single day I mean one of the things that most of us will do and most of us here in the states anyway first thing every morning you get out of bed and where's the first place you head is the coffee pot you know so religiously because we make this a practice that we do set time every day we do it religiously faithfully we faithfully get out of bed and head to the coffee pot you may have to take a pit stop to the bathroom on the way but you know still the first the, the first place we are actually trying to head to is the coffee pot so we religiously get up and head to the coffee pot now am i saying we're making an idol out of getting our coffee first thing in the morning could be i'm not saying yes i ain't saying no on that one what's more important rolling out of bed and saying father thank you for this day and then going to the coffee pot or go to the coffee pot and then father thank you for this day you know so yeah you know in a way yes we could be using our coffee pot as an idol it could be but and that's the way that the enemy wants to work us against it he wants to bring us into this religiousness in our lives make our life all about religion we religiously do something you know what we can take and it's like i say then we'll break into these different world religions we religiously do things according to the teachings of buddha we religiously do things according to the teachings of hinduism or islam or whatever it may be we apply these religious practices 
into our life and we get caught up in a religion. God is not a God of religion. God does not want us to religiously do. God wants a personal relationship with us. And the way we live in a personal relationship with God is that we live a spiritual relationship with God. We don't physically, no longer do we have to break and bring a cat, a, a sheep to be sacrificed at the altar on Passover. No longer do we have to bring a fatted calf to be laid on the sacrificial table as a, as a sin offering or whatever it may be. We no longer have to do those things. Jesus became the sacrifice once and for all. The one and only sacrifice. But then it tells us here in Romans 1 that we live our lives as living sacrifices, which is our spiritual act of worship to God. And so we live our lives holy and pleasing to God in a relationship type manner, not in a actual physical getting out here, build an altar, sacrifice something to please God. We do it spiritually by in everything that we do, whether in word or in deed. We do it all for the glory of God. Everything we do, we do for the glory of God. I think that's Colossians 3, 17, I think. I mean, I understand, we don't, but yet we still, we get caught up in this. People will, people will accept Christ as being the Son of God and they become transformed they become made new a new creation through christ so then here we go here's the enemy man he man, he's really going to come and get you now i mean yeah he had you he had you when you was going to the bars he had you doing all of this crazy stuff he had you when you was lusting off after men women whatever it may be he had you he didn't really bother you because i mean you was reaping some physical benefit out of it for some way or the other you was reaping all of these benefits, but man, all of them benefits is going to kill you in the end. But now here we are born again. We're made new. We're a new creation in Christ. And we love God because He first loved us. Someone said a while, a while back, I heard someone say, that they just couldn't do the believe this God thing. And this was a person that was a believer at one time. They said, I just can't believe this God thing, this father thing. What kind of father wants you to constantly tell him, I love you? What father wants to constantly be hearing that, you know? Well, it's like we was talking this morning out there. And some of the things that we were talking about is sometimes we can do too much of a good thing because eventually what happens is we're going through the motions. We're religiously doing this. But where's the feeling with it? Where's the spirit behind it? And the spirit kind of gets lost. And here you are, religiously. I mean, I admit I did it. Michelle, when we first met years ago, I would bring her flowers every week. Oh, she used to love flowers. I would bring her home flowers every week. And began, like I said, it turned into a religious thing. Religiously, I would bring her home flowers every single week. I loved her. But to bring it home the flowers became like a religious thing. And finally, she told me, she said, you know, you can kind of back off of the flowers. I know you love me. Show me you love me in other ways besides just bringing me flowers. So then... We gotta be careful and not go to the extreme like I did. That's the way the enemy wants to do this too. He wants to take us to an extreme in the opposite direction. She said she counted two years. I never brought her flowers. I don't know that it was two years. She said, "Yeah, that was." I counted it, but anyway, I kind of went from flowers every week to who knows when the next time I brought her flowers. I didn't get that. And I was wrong, but that's the way the enemy does us. We come to Christ, man. We come to Christ. We come to God. We accept Jesus. 
we're going to live our lives according to God. Man, we are all on fire for God. We love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. I'm going to do everything in the world I can for you. Every person I've run across, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to tell them about God. I'm going to tell them how Jesus is going to change their lives. And then, along the way, we kind of lose up. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he sent that letter to the church in Ephesus. You have forgotten your first love. Come back to your first love. Return to your first love. We need to stay. We have to keep it watching over ourselves because, man, it's so easy to be deceived. It's so easy to be lured away. And it's what the enemy was wanting to do, man. Like I say, in the spirit realm now that we're born again and believers, we got a big bullseye on our back. I didn't have the bullseye before because we were doing what he wanted us to do. But now, man, we got a bullseye on our back. And he is going to do all kinds of deceptive ways to bring us, to draw us away from our Father. Many ways. So I mean, here's this lot back to this a minute ago. How can a God who loves us just want us all just to keep constantly telling him, "We love you, we love you, we love you"? He don't want to hear. Hey, yes, I mean yes. When someone says, "You tell me I love you all the time," I'm tired of hearing you say, "I love you." I mean, people will do this. I'm tired of hearing you say it. Don't. One thing, don't stop saying. Maybe back off a little bit. But instead of saying it all the time, show them you love them. And that's what God wants from us. Jesus says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. Waking up every single morning and say, I love you, Jesus. Yeah, that's a great thing. But do more than just say, I love you, Jesus. I'm here to tell you, lip service don't get you much anywhere in life. Lip service deceives a lot of people. Lip service becomes a religious thing sometimes. Actions are what speaks louder than words. Jesus said we would know them by their fruits. It is our fruits. It is our fruits of love for Jesus. It is our fruits of love for God our Father. It's how we show our Father that we love Him. It's not us waking up all the time and saying, I love you, Father. It is our fruits. It is our life. Remember, we are to live as living and holy sacrifices, which is our spiritual act of worship. It's not just, I love you, Father, and going about our business. And people will get up and they'll say, okay, they'll establish them. And here we go. We're going we're gonna, to establish this religious life now I'm going to get up every morning I'm going to grab my coffee I'm going to open my Bible I'm going to read two chapters of my Bible every single morning and I'm going to close my Bible and I'm going to go on the rest of my day and never touch it again. When you first come to Christ, when you first come to Christ, how much did you read your Bible in comparison to how much you read it today? When you first come to Christ, you might sit there and read that Bible two chapters first thing in the morning. I almost guarantee you, sometime an hour, two hours three hours later as you was going throughout the day and you had the time of doing nothing what did you do? you opened that Bible and was reading even more probably more than what you're doing today we need to come back to our first love because without us reading the Bible it's like Jesus said in the last days even the very elect to be deceived. We are told to test the spirits. To know 
what you're up to, God. We stop reading our Bible. We stop reading these words right here of the Spirit of Truth. And it says, All word is God breathed. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man may have wrote those words down, but it was the Holy Spirit reading, speaking through these men to write these words down. It says, I asked when I began this, for the Holy Spirit to speak through me. Not me speak, the Holy Spirit speak through me. It is the Spirit of Truth. When you like that Bible, you're not just reading God's Word. You're reading from the Spirit of Truth. And that Spirit of Truth is what prevents you, gives you the discernment, so that in these last days, you are not deceived. We need to read our Word, and we need to read more than just two chapters a day. We need to be in the Word every moment that we can. So then here, God, so we step into this little religious deal. I'm going to read two chapters a day. And then he comes along and he goes, uh-oh, they're still reading the Word. I can't go for that. No, 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 no. So what does he do? He brings this disruption. He brings that disruption. He brings the Yap, little yapping dog that's got to go outside or you let the little yapping dog outside so you can sit down and read the Bible the next thing you know you got the little yapper at the back door yapping wanting in so you get up and as you get up you look over here and you see this little thing here that needs to, that's out of place you got to get it all put up and then when you get it put up you look over here and go uh oh I left breadcrumbs out on the counter so I got to wipe this off I got to wipe that off the next thing you know all this time that you have allotted for reading two chapters you barely read one paragraph so then, eventually, as time gets on, goes on, you get up in the mornings and you start looking around and you're seeing this and that and whatever, and you don't even sit down and read that one paragraph. We don't need to be set in religious expectations. We don't need to be set in, because I mean, when you set expectations and you fall short, what does the enemy do then? He comes along and brings in guilt. You're not reading your Bible. You're not reading your Bible enough. The Holy Spirit comes to you and says, you know, you're not reading my word. But I tell you what, there's some good stuff in there. I've said a lot of great things. Maybe you want to, you know, <coughs> pick it back up again and start reading. The devil always brings us and tries to bring us into a guilt or a shame. The Holy Spirit makes bring a conviction upon us. But in that conviction, he also gives us a way out through repentance. And getting back on track. Getting back on this straight and narrow path to heaven. Instead of going down this fork or that fork, he brings us back. Again, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our lives. <coughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, for... Thank you, Jesus, for sending us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Because I know, I, you know I wouldn't be nowhere near where I am today if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't. And I know you, Gloria, wouldn't be where you are today without the Holy Spirit. None of us would be. And we've stepped off, we've, I'm sure, and we've all sidestepped somewhere along the ways. But man, he's always saying, hey, come on back over here. You're kind of losing sight, you know? Cross the yellow line. Come on, get back over here on your side of the road. Get back over where you belong. Yeah. <coughs> so then we get here and we go, okay, I'm going to pray. Every night I'm going to turn the TV off at 7 o'clock. I'm going to pray for two hours before I go to bed. So you go in there and you start praying every night for two hours. And then about a week later, well, I'm I think I need to do this. I need to do that. 
So that two hour prayer time. Oh man, that's a good show. I don't want to miss it. I think I'm going to watch this show. Now I got to go to bed at 9 o'clock. But you know, you got to watch this show first. Let me watch this show. I'll watch this show on TV tonight. It's a special program. You know, CMA Awards are going to be on. I got to see who wins the award. You know, MTV Awards. I got to see who wins. You know, so you stay up. Next thing you know, here it is 9 30 at night. Past your bedtime. And you know, oh man, I'm so tired. I don't have time to pray. I gotta go to sleep. I gotta get up early in the morning. So here we start getting these distractions. We start getting these distractions. We had this religious thing we religiously set up a time for two hours of prayer every single I'm not saying pray for two hours every time. I uh, pray, I pray when I get the need to pray. I pray when I, I pray. Paul said pray without ceasing. That's the best way to do it. Just don't ever quit. And I used to drive to work in the morning. These other guys would be sound asleep and I would just be praying while I was driving. I would get to work, got to get busy. So I put my focus on what I needed to do for the day. And I said, God, you know, I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not hanging up. I'm not even putting you on hold. I still got the, I'm going to keep this phone line between me and you and have an open. And I need to focus some attention on what I need to be doing for the day. So I would get up there and I would get everybody situated, telling them all in their right directions and all that kind of stuff. I would jump in my machine and I would get out there and just start cutting trees. The next thing you know, man, I'm cutting trees and I am laying them down, laying them down, and I'm still praying. And I mean, back then, my mind cleared. I've got everybody situated. My mind is cleared of the distractions that I had to deal with. And I'm back to just laying down trees, and I'm praying, and I'm praising the Lord. And trees, it's like that machine was on, on autopilot. The trees are just appalling like crazy throughout the day. And I, it was, all of a sudden I would stop, and I would look, and you know, where I was, a hundred yards up that way when I first started. Now here I am way down here and I go, wow. Because it's praying without ceasing. Staying connected with God. And it's the way we need to be living our lives. It's not, we don't just set up this religious time frame. So, okay, God, I'm going to give you two hours of Bible reading. I'm going to give you two chapters of Bible reading in the morning. Then I'm going to give you two hours of prayer at night. And I'm to, and, no. God don't want us to be like a bunch of robots. He don't want us pre-programmed. That's why he gave us all free will. That's why he gave all of these angels free will. These different, I don't know how many different kinds of angels there are in heaven. I have no clue. One of these days I'll be up there and I'll get to see them all and I'll go, wow, you are one cool angel. Your job? That was Man, that was a cool job. Your task that God you know, gave you to do? Yeah, that's great. I never even knew you kind of angel existed, you know. Well, that's the way that we need to be as well. We are, God has given us all a calling in our life. He has given all all missions in our life. He gives us all seasons in our life where we bring forth the fruit of the season for that season. And when that season is done, and we and we have produced the fruit that He has established us to produce in that time, that season, and that season comes to an end, He will open up a new season in our lives, and we produce another fruit. And we just go, and it's not a continual robotic religious way of doing. It is from us being in obedience to God, to being in obedience to Christ and following His commandments. And His commandments. We love you, Lord God, with all of our hearts and our minds and our soul. Abs most absolutely. And also, God, I love my neighbor. I love my brother. I love my sister as I love myself. And these are the greatest commandments. I follow these commandments. 
because I love you, Jesus, because you first love me. Not because you just had this religious, uh, what do they call it? What do we call that when we get ready to go on a trip or a vacation? An itinerary. Jesus, you did not, Jesus did not have an itinerary. Preset, religious, that he religiously followed step by step by step by step from the manger to the cross, from the cross out of the grave. Out of the grave to his ascension. back to the Father's right hand. Jesus did not have this itinerary written down in stone. These words that we have in our Bible were written as Jesus was living his life. Even though Jesus was God, he gave up his Godship, so to speak, in order to be and live as a man, as we all live as a man. But yet Jesus, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside Jesus, God's Spirit inside Jesus, stayed true to the Father. And that same Spirit that lived inside Jesus now lives inside each and every one of us. So we stay true to the Father. Not by following this preset itinerary and denomination and doctrine and so forth. But by living according to the Spirit. <coughs> so, we're not a bunch of robots. We're not a bunch of religious freaks or fanatics. We are sons and daughters of God. Because we have been born again in spirit. And again, anyone who has not been born again in spirit, who has not received the Holy Spirit, accept Him. And He will come. There's a lot of people out here in this world who have accepted Jesus, but yet they have not accepted the Holy Spirit to be their leader, their comforter, to be the one to lead them, to comfort them, to lead them into all truth. And they haven't accepted that. They haven't been washed clean and submitted themselves to the Holy Spirit. We need to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Allow right. Him to come inside and to lead us into all truth. So Father, we thank You for this day. We thank You for this Word. We thank You for being with us. <clears throat> We're so gracious to you for all that you have done, the love that you have bestowed upon us, your mercy, your grace, your sending your Son, your one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And it's because of all of the, the powerful, the most supernatural work of all, of Jesus being the sacrificial lamb for our sin and to come out of that, or to be crucified and to walk out of that grave as a new creation in you, that we too, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of us. So Father, we accept this. We, we seek your Spirit, Father. We seek your Spirit to come and live inside of us just as he did within Jesus. So Father, we, we just love you. We're so gracious to you. We magnify the name of Jesus. We lift the name of Jesus high and higher and higher and higher. The name above all names, above all powers and dominions, above all kings, above all thrones, above all governments. It's the name of Jesus. And we love you, Jesus, and we thank you, Jesus. We love you and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And any misleading spirit, any misleading, miscorrecting spirit that comes into the lives of anyone today that takes wants to take them and lay and place them back into a chain, into the chains of religious life, into the chains of religion, into the bounds of the religion. We break those binds right now in Jesus' most mighty name. We break those binds. 
We sever those cords in Jesus' mighty name. There is no child of God who the Son is set free is free indeed. And there is no child of God to be any longer bound to religious chains, but to give them life freely, willingly, and to live their life as a holy, living sacrifice to you, Father. As it is their spiritual act of worship. Father, again, we just thank you for all that you've done. We'd like to say we we break off, we bind up every religious spirit that would come against anyone listening. And we tell these spirits to leave in Jesus' mighty name. To get out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Any religious ideology, get out now in Jesus' mighty name. Leave in Jesus' name. We do. We thank you, Jesus, and I say to you, Father, that you send your angels to minister to each and every man and woman today. Send your ministering angels to minister to them all. We thank you. And we love you because we know full well that you love us. Amen. Amen. So, so I don't know. I guess we had some hiccups with the internet. Yeah, there are some more hiccups I can see. Okay. Michelle said there was hiccups. My screen only went off one time. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. Generally, my screen will go off, and I get the black screen with the little circle thing. I only seen that one time today. Okay. So. So I'm sorry for the whatever that was. That was. It's out of my control. Oh, my control was just being forgetful and not pushing the connect now button to get started when I went on for 15 minutes with nobody able to. Well, you know, it was a nobody heard it except for us. the Michelles and Roscoe. Thank hey, God. <laughs> you heard us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it we heard good. it. It was good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes there, we don't know. Maybe there was a reason for this. There could have been a lot of reasons. We know that there's so, been a lot of things going on, so it's okay. Okay, mm -hmm. we got we 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 got we got Abba on That's our right. side. We got Papa. Yeah. Papa's God. He's watching us. He's taking right. care of us. Come, Lord Jesus. All right. Well, we love y'all. We're yeah. gonna get off this thing, and I don't know. Yeah, uh, we're going. Sorry about the dog barking. She gets insistent. Gotta go outside. Yeah, gotta come back she... in. She had to go to the little girl's room, I guess. And she went and found her closet out there somewhere. She mm. was over there. Glory, she is huge. Harassing somebody. <laughs> I want to go out. She's like, I'm yeah. getting up off the couch. <laughs> she is. She's huge. Where is she? She's harassing. She's over there hiding. Mm. They're hiding. You can't see the caps they're on. Where is she? She's mm. over here now. Oh. Okay, are you just trying the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, you're gonna do it. I'm going for a walk. Walkabout. Time for the walkabout. Where in the world does she go? Anyway, Gloria. See, where's he at? There he is. There's our little trouble bubbles. Trouble. Ain't him cute. Ah, ah, ah. ah. Here she is. There's a monster. There she I'm trying to get her focused in here. Yeah. She's huge. Ah. She's a big one. <laughs> That's Trudy. She even kissed you guys. So, <laughs> and then of course Roscoe and Michelle, wherever I did with them. No, oh, that's me. Oh, that's right. Ah, there they are. And there's this beautiful Michelle. Yeah, I guess you can see them. I don't know. Yeah, I can't see now. No. All right. All right. We love you all. We love you guys. Bye. Everybody, God bless. Love you, Gloria. Enjoy your you day. Have a great day, too. Enjoy your yes. sermon. Day. And maybe, I mean, hey, we're going to get a couple of days of a break again from this heat starting tomorrow, I think. Maybe. We see if I'm supposed to get down to like 61 degrees a couple of nights. Man, we're going to be freezing around here. Then we're only back to 100 again by next weekend. But anyway, whatever. All right, God bless you. God bless you all. Everyone who and wants to. Until next time. God bless. <laughs>